Hey everyone, Pastor Kerry here. Thanks for connecting with me today. And for the kids who are tuning in, man, I'm glad you joined us. And I say us because I have a friend with me today who's going to help me make my point. And I think you're really going to enjoy meeting him, although uh, he can take a little bit of getting used to. In fact, uh, the first time people meet him, he kind of freaks him out a little bit. But anyway, uh, where he went here? Uh, Al, where did you go? Al! What? Ah! Al, Al, you got to quit doing that. You remember the first time that you met Lori? Lori's my wife, by the way. And this is Al, uh, Al the Gator. And uh, the first time I brought Al home, Lori hadn't met him yet. And uh, we were at the back door when she came from work. And man, she screamed and uh, yelled at me. And, and uh, <laughs> it, yeah, it's not funny. Well, Actually, it was kind of funny, but anyway, we're lucky we both didn't get kicked out of the house that day, but the point is you can't go around scaring people. You're not going to have any friends, and that can be kind of hard for Al because, well, uh, I mean, he looks kind of mean. Well, that, yes, you do. Uh, and after all, he's an alligator, but uh, just like my wife Lori learned, uh, Al's not nearly as scary as he looks. In fact, uh, he looks kind of hard and scaly, but uh, if you could feel miracles, he's actually kind of uh, soft and fuzzy, and, and he's got this long tail that he, he likes to kind of whip around like he's going to whack people with it, uh, but it's really kind of soft and squishy, and, and in fact, um, I'll let you in on another little secret here, and uh, uh, no, not you, them, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, Al, open, Al, open up here. It, you see these teeth here that look kind of like hard and razor sharp? Uh, they're really kind of soft and and rubbery. So, uh, you know, as mean as Al looks and as scary and tough, he's really a big softy. In fact, uh, the softest part is it right under here, under his chin here. And if you scratch him there, he just starts to, to relax a little bit. In fact, if you do it long enough, it kind of puts him to sleep. Uh, right, Al? Uh, Al? Al! <laughs> Wake up. We're not done yet. Anyway, the point is, is just like Al here, there's a lot of things in life that aren't nearly as scary as they might appear at first. And that's good to know these days because there's a lot of stuff going on right now that scares people and gets them worried about stuff. And it's not just kids. It's grown-ups who are looking around at what's going on. And they're worried about things. And there's been a lot of craziness over the last five or six months. I mean, with the coronavirus and people worried about getting sick and and then it seems like everybody's mad at each other and there are places in the country where, where people are rioting and, and breaking things and families who've lost their jobs and, and then just the everyday things of life, like wondering about what's going to go on with school or making new friends. But God tells us that if we trust him, we don't have to be afraid about any of those things. In fact, Matthew chapter 6, verse 34 says, Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough concerns of its own. You know, that means something that I've learned over my life is that most of the things I've been worried or scared about hardly ever turned out as bad as I thought they might. In fact, just worrying about them just wasted time and made it things worse than it really needed to be. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 tells us, don't be anxious about anything. And that means don't worry about stuff. But instead... Go to God in prayer with thanksgiving. And then it says that his peace will come over our lives and guard our minds through Christ Jesus. So instead of worrying about things, go to God and talk to him about it. Because that takes the focus off of your problems and puts it on to God's power. And all of a sudden you'll realize, I don't have to worry about these things because God is bigger than all of it. And he is always in control. In fact, Jesus himself told us before he left this earth that he would always be with us no matter what. In fact, another thing the Bible tells us, I think more than any other thing, are the words fear not or don't be afraid. It says that 365 times. Yeah, I think God's trying to get across something to us about the fact that no matter what's going on at school or at home or at work or in our cities or even in our nation, that if we're trusting him and we're following Jesus, then we can always choose faith 
over fear. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't some serious things going on and we need to make good choices and be careful about things like the virus. And that means, you know, keeping our hands clean and not touching our face all the time and, and you know, giving people their space and, and being careful around uh, your grandparents or older people because it's easier for them to get sick. But the facts tell us that kids actually handle the virus better than anyone. And uh, uh, I don't know that alligators can even get it. But anyway, uh, no matter what happens, God's going to take care of you, and we're all going to come through this stronger. So if you ever feel scared about what's going on or worried about things you can't control, just remember our buddy Al here, who's not nearly as scary as he looks. But even more, remember God, who always knows what's going on. He's always in control, and no matter what happens, he's with you and will take care of you. Right, Al? Ah, that's right. And hey, by the way, thanks for helping me with this video today. And thank you guys for tuning in. I hope to see you soon. And maybe Al will be with me and you can meet him in person. And if you do, uh, don't be scared of him. It's going to be all right. So, so long for now.